Hello friends, today we will discuss about range update and range query in segment tree. We have already discussed about point update and range, range query in previous video. Let's uh, see the problem statement first. You are given array A of integers of length n. You have two types of queries. First is you have to find sum in the range L to R. Okay. And second is the you have update each element of the array from L to R range to value V. We already know in the previous video how to do range queries, but in previously we already only discussed about point updates. What we used to do in point updates is let's say if you have uh, if you are given this array A and its corresponding segment tree is this, let's suppose you have to update uh, point two uh, array uh, um, value at location two to four. So we'll first uh, check at this node. Left lies in the uh, two lies in the left side. It will go to this. Uh, two lies in, in the right side and you, you have just found the leaf node that is the node which contains the value of two and we'll update this value update this value and similarly we'll reconstruct these values from left and right shell uh, let's suppose this is four and then five plus four nine and similarly nine plus twenty one thirty we'll update it to thirty let's extend this approach for uh, uh, for range queries Let's suppose we have to do update query from 1 to 4 and update it to value 4 okay uh, here it is 1 to 4 we have to update now we'll divide it in two parts 1 to 2 lies in the left 3 to 4 lies in the right okay similarly first we process the left chain 1 uh, and then 1 1 to 2 will be divided in two parts 1 to 1 in the left side and 2 to 2 in the right side and then again one to one lie in the right side now we have reached the node where the value of one needs to update it we update the value to four okay now we can come to this node we came back to this node because four plus two is six we'll update this value to six okay here uh, and now we move to right hand side again we have to update this value to four and this again we update this value to six plus four ten okay and finally right side of this three to four three to four uh, lies in the left child of this and we we are here again three to four in the three to three in the in left side four to four in the right side we'll update it to four and update this to four and finally four plus four it will be updated to eight and eight plus eight to sixteen and sixteen plus ten is equals to twenty six so this is how we are going to update if we take the approach of the point updates. Can you see the time complexity of this approach? Time complex. In worst case, it will be big O of n. Why? Well, let's suppose we have to update 0 to 5, 0 to 5 range. Then you have to go to every node to reach every leaf node. Okay. And if you go to every node, how many nodes in this segment? We have already discussed there are four n nodes, less than four n nodes. So overall time complexity becomes big O of n. Now let's discuss lazy propagation approach for update queries. So what it gives is it gives O log n uh, time complexity for range updates. In this approach, we will maintain three information. First is uh, at each node, we will maintain three information. First is sum, second is marker, third is value. Marker sum is the previous as we uh, used to maintain for normal segment tree. Second is the marker. This is a boolean which maintains whether a ch uh, child of this node has to be updated or not. And uh, second is the third is the value. If the child has to be updated, what should be the value of the child, new value of the child? Now, initially while building the segment tree, we will initialize the marker as 0 and value as infinity. So what happens in lazy propagation is, let's suppose you, uh, you have to, uh, you are at node t and you, your query range is L to R. And node t also maintains uh, information from L to R only. Then you just need to update sum 
and marker to 1 and value to the V. The V is the value to the node has to be updated. Okay. And then go back to the parent. In this way, we are adding additional information that the child needs to be updated, but since it's not required, we'll update only when a query comes for child node. Okay. Let's go through an example. You are given this array and you have to update 0 to 4 with the value 5. You start with root node. You can easily say it will divide into 0 to 2 in the left side and 2 to 3 to 4 on right side. Now 0 to 2 range and this node also have a range 0 to 2 only. This means this satisfy this condition. Then we will update this. Sum will become now 15. Marker will set to be 1 and value to 5. And we will return back to parent. I will go to right hand side. We will divide into 2. It will come to left hand side. Same. Now again it satisfy this condition. And again we will update this. Now value will be uh, 10. Marker will be 1 and value method will be 5. And now 10 plus 8, 18, this will be the new value of this and this will become 15 plus 18, 33, comma, 0, comma, infinity. See we didn't update this marker for this node and this node. Why? Because we have already propagated that the nodes, child, to child nodes that it has to be updated. But in this case, we haven't propagated the change to child now. That's why it has been updated to 1. Now let's see. Again, a query comes for uh, update 0 to 1 with value 6. What will happen? 0 to 1, it will lie in left hand side. Here we come and we see that the child needs to be updated. So before going further, first apply this update so what it does is it says that mark your child mark the left hand child and right hand child with uh, 1 and value will be 0 to 1 have a value will 10 and infinity will change to 5 similarly for this also value will be 5 and the uh, this will change to this will change to 1 and value will be 5. Now, now uh, go through the same process and you can update it to this to child to 0 value to infinity. Now 0 to 1 lies between which side left hand side it will go to left hand side and again this satisfy this query. Now what will it do? It will apply since the value here it is 1 it will go, uh, apply it to child first so child will run to 5 1 and infinity and similarly this will also become 5 1 and infinity now what we will do is uh, this now this will change to now new value has to be 12 and will mark that ch ch child needs to be updated with value 6 Okay, and we'll go back to this parent. What will be the new value of this? This will be 12 plus 10, uh, 5, 17, and this will be 0 in, and infinity because as a, we have already propagated the chain. And similarly, we'll move to this node and we'll update them. So you can easily see what are the steps. First, in lazy propagation, first see if child see if child has to update child means to update update it update it otherwise just apply apply later apply lazy propagation that is that is this rule sorry this rule we have to apply 
Now let's see what's the time complexity of this. Since, since, let's start with the root node. If, let's start with the root node. So first we'll visit the root node. So uh, at the uh, first level we'll visit only one node. Then at max we can split it into two recursive calls. That is two nodes. Okay. Let's suppose some at some arbitrary level we visited two nodes. Okay. And it can uh, call four recursive node recursively call four recur uh, four nodes. So in this way for one and two we can easily say that at max there can be four nodes which will be visited let's see what happens if there are four nodes at a level if there are four nodes what can happen is it can split into two it can split into two and this can split into two but as you can see that the query ranges the update query ranges are continuous are continuous sub array so this has this has to set if satisfy the lazy propagation property propagation property that we discussed in previous slide so it means that we will stop at this node and this node only these two nodes can further split into uh, four nodes or three nodes or two nodes according to the condition that is it can further split into four three or two or one or zero that is at max four nodes it can split so we have proved that at any arbitrary level we are not processing more than four nodes how many level what what is the height of this uh, segmentary log n so at max four log n nodes we have so what will be the time complexity big o of log n now let's see what will be the change in the sum query in some query now we'll first check whether the child needs to be updated or not if if it is it has to be updated then first apply that update then uh, follow the normal sum query flow which we have already discussed in previous video so let's say uh, we, uh, we are given an array a and you have two types of queries two queries one is the update zero range zero to two with value five and sum query uh, zero to one so after this update the segment tree will look like this let's see first some query what we have to do so first we'll go to root node we'll check first whether this uh, child need child nodes needs to be updated since it's zero it uh, it is false we don't need to update the child node we'll move whether it lies in left or right it lies in the left hand side left check it will go to left side now now we can see that this value is one marker is one it means that child needs to be updated so let's first update the child's this will be and this will update to 10 1 and 5 and this will be updated to 5 1 and 5 now the normal sum query flow since 0 to 1 lies in the left hand side we will go to left hand side this query range so this node completely lies in this range that is the same node contains the information of 0 to 1 but before getting the answer we will check whether the child nodes to be updated yes so we will update first the child nodes so now the child nodes will become 515 and this will also become 515 now now we'll follow the normal sum query flow since these two no this node has this information of 0 to 1 it will return simply 10 to this and 
then finally 10 to this and finally the answer so this is the flow for sum query now does it change the time complexity of sum query time complexity change tc no why so what does it add in normal sum query flow is updation of child nodes that to only the direct child nodes okay and how many direct child nodes are possible only two for each node two for each node so still the time complexity is big o of log n for sum query thank you